There's a real difference between Pat Man and I. I've been a legislator for four years. He has been a politician for 30. As I referenced earlier, my first job out of college was as a paratrooper in the Army. I learned then that what matters is getting the job done. You have to make tough decisions to get the job done. Whoever, whichever one of us is elected to the Congress is going to have to make tough choices as a representative. It's going to have to face tough decisions, and it's going to have to speak the truth to their constituencies. The truth is, you cannot cut taxes for millionaires and reduce the deficit. The truth is that we are not going to create jobs here in the United States if we continue tax policies that encourage the shipment of jobs overseas. The truth is that we must invest in education so that we have a trained workforce, so people have a path into the middle class. And we must invest in our infrastructure. You cannot do these things if on the campaign trail you promise tax cuts to rich people and tax cuts to corporations. Pat Mann is running under the mantle with the endorsement of the Tea Party. In fact, the Independence Hall Tea Party has endorsed two candidates within 15 miles of this podium. One is Pat Mann and the other is Christine O'Donnell. Pat Mann uh, will go to Washington, D.C. You cannot go to Washington, D.C. having run as the Tea Party candidate and defend our seniors and defend the poor. If I'm elected to Congress, I'll be an advocate for education, I'll be an advocate for health care, and I'll be an advocate for investing in our infrastructure. Pat Mann will be a different kind of congressman. He's told you that tonight, and he said it on the campaign trail. If he had a chance to vote for aid to the states, a bill that provided millions of dollars to our local school districts to ensure that they could keep pre-K programs and that they didn't have to lay off teachers, to ensure that they could keep, getting, keep providing a quality education, he would have voted no. He would have chosen the Tea Party and ideology over his constituents. If Pat had had the chance to vote on a bill pending in the, in the legislature, which would close a loophole known as the Florida loophole, which allows criminals to carry guns on our streets, Pat would have voted no. He would have voted with the NRA and against his constituents. Pat, time and time again, has indicated that he will go with ideology and rhetoric over real needs. If he had had a chance to vote on the Small Business Lending Act at a time when the number one challenge facing our small businesses is access to credit and capital, he would have voted no. If you send me to Washington, D.C., I'll stand up for you. I'll represent the people of the 7th Congressional District. I'll fight for real solutions, and I'll fight every day to improve the lives of the families in our area. Thank you very much.
that we lost a sense of confidence in the future of this country. We have to rebuild a sense of confidence in our future by going back to the basics and allowing us to develop a, a, a vibrant economy based on the, the principles of free enterprise. Uh, Brian Lentz forgets what he's actually voted for. Here's a guy that talks about the idea that he's going to go down there and be in the middle road, but he's wrapped himself around the very policies that Nancy Pelosi has, has uh, been supporting right from the very beginning. The idea of not just the health care bill, but the public option. Looking at the job field and cap and trade legislation right now, the billions of dollars of new spending that have been part of the budgets that he has advocated. All of the things right now that have put us into the kinds of circumstances that we are in in this economic circus situation. One of the important things that we need to have in Washington right now is the ability to have genuine dialogue. And it will not happen unless there's the ability for a Republican voice to speak in the current Congress. I'm, I ask for your support 